This is the virus, Sirius XM. And now, the Opie and Anthony Show. Wow, any reason we're going way back to the 90s? Gotta be. Jerky Boys movie, right? No reason, I just found it, so I figured I'd play it. Oh, well, E-Rock, just make decisions for yourself. <laughs> Back there. Lucy Goosey Nagel today. <laughs> Lucy Goosey Nagel. Yeah. Mm. We expect attention from yes. out here. Well, we do have uh, Ron Bennington from the Ron and Fez show, which can be heard from uh, 11 a.m. right after the shit show. After show. With the, Well, with the shit show after, whatever it's called. Right after the shit show, or Ron <laughs> and Fez come on. And uh, now that's a show. That's a program that you know, I listen to. Uh, Sam had a big guest yesterday. Was the only playmate I've ever seen without an ass. I had <laughs> yeah, never seen an that playmate. before in my life. Mm. Did you notice it all, Sam? No, I didn't see it. She was sitting down when I saw her. Did so you I have didn't... the same girl on that we had? No, it was oh. a Playboy playmate that was like, you know, the girl we had on was from Penthouse, and she came in, and the first thing she did was took her tits out, and she yeah, pulled yeah. her skirt off. Great. This girl was in like a. Old T-shirt and a pair of jeans, and Ron Bennington informed me that she had no ass either. Oh, really? For a playmate, is very surprising. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. she was. Prom- she was promoting cigars, though. But she wasn't into like like she wasn't wearing anything sexy. No, or, nothing no. sexy at all. They don't well, just get because, it, do they? It's like who who want, a nobody wants to listen to you. Do you think that no. you, you're just going to make people smoke cigars because you were fuckable in a magazine? No, you're probably right. <laughs> she came in doing a read too, didn't she? Yeah, Macanudo, who oh. is here. Yeah, she had this whole paper. Promote. Well, you I just don't hear the paper out. <laughs> Rob oh, Cross shit. told me that because Rob Cross put her booked her on the after show out of nowhere, and I go, okay, bring her on. But wait, he books for you? He just saw her in the hallway because apparently oh. she was with some guy. I don't know if she was booked on any show, but this guy was just passing out flyers to people who are on the air or know people on the air do trying people, to get into studios. Do people just come up here in the elevator, walk around until someone goes, yeah, let's get them on the air. <laughs> the weird thing is you can't get a friend in here no, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have to go through 18 <laughs> levels of security. But you just see people milling about in the halls and go, yeah, come on in. We'll talk to you. Those yeah, fucking, what, what are those horse ranch girls? What the fuck they are? The prostitutes that come in all the time. Oh, yeah. with Dennis and then Hoff. they just put their fucking faces up against every show. Yeah. Yeah, they love getting uh, airtime. Oh, do they love it. And they got nothing to say. No. Nothing. Yeah, like, tell us something. Tell us about, uh, you know, taking in the ass. How much <laughs> is it? Does it, does it hurt exactly. you at this point in your life? Hate it. You ever accidentally shit on somebody during anal sex? Come on, let's get let's get to it. Yeah, there, there's something interesting. Uh, Ronnie B, um, I was asking uh, earlier, how is Fez? Oh, unbelievable! Just really strong right now. Really doing great. <laughs> is he <laughs> great? Because uh, I just see him. Uh, we 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 cross paths in the turnstiles. I'm um, I'm going out. He's coming in. It's like, all right, how you doing? It's like those uh, the sheepdog and the uh, coyote. That would punch in and out in the cartoons. The old time card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, because we were on the air the other day when the earthquake hit. Ah, uh, right. Uh, so we got the feeling in the building, you know, the, the kind of bounce in the building. Since then, not so good. Not so good. Yeah. See, see, if everything goes perfectly, he seems to be teetering on right. the edge. So if you get, <laughs> especially something like an earthquake... Uh, that's got to shake him up a little. Well, he yesterday the thing was he kind of got locked up, and we're going, "What's what's the problem?" And he goes, well, "What if the earthquake loosened the foundation on the building, and now the hurricane winds knock oh, the building push over?" Push the building over. And it's the kind of stuff that you know, I think like when you're four, you kind of <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, the yeah. kind of stuff that little kids will say to you. It'll scare the he kid. And the... He couldn't mean that. He, he's claimed that he did. He claimed that he thought that through some kind of the weakening, perfect storm. Yeah, the weakening from the earthquake and then the high winds. I mean, the buildings work as a sail. They're giant, <laughs> and, and they, a lot of pressure pushes against these things. I, I might have to be in his corner on this one. Don't even say that jokingly, because I know he's listening. <laughs> I might have to actually think, though. You know, the hurricane, what does hold well, these, these are, things These are up? technically not, I'll say this and kidding aside, these are not... Built up to the standards that they are on the West Coast. Like, these no, buildings no. were not built with earthquakes in mind. So the foundations here... Right. They Dr. Cocker said that. that. They, they never f- thought there would be an earthquake of any substance where you would need uh, earthquake proofing. These are just solid buildings with foundations that go deep in the ground. 
that can probably get affected very easily. And they've had by... inspectors in here for the last few days checking um, because oh, there have been a few foundation cracks in the city. So, but I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. No problem. The hurricane can only push what 100, 100 mile an hour winds pushing against the surface. That's probably uh, a couple of square acres, a vertical. Nothing's going to happen, Ronnie. But it's a thousand miles away right now, so we're fairly sh- safe. We're all right. <laughs> yeah, nah, we're yeah. fairly safe. It's yeah, I wouldn't on, worry about it. On Sunday, it's going to hit on a day you're not even here. Yeah. If he shows up and the building's not here, he could then feel relieved. It's like, hey, I wasn't in that. I think we'd hear about it though. Yeah, but there's also a couple of days before a hurricane hit. There's updraft winds, which always come. Why? Why do this? Seriously? <laughs> Why do, Why do things? <laughs> there are. Hurricanes really? have updraft winds that will go. They're, they're, they don't talk about them much because they're ver- they're hurricane force, but they're quick. It's like wind shear almost. Yeah, though. almost yeah. like quick updraft winds. Yeah. See, this yeah. is a form of bullying. It really is. It's it is. A form it is of bullying. bullying. You're, yeah. you're, you're right. You're right. But he's he, is he? So the hurricane thing got, has him a little. It, yesterday was a very very bad day. He was even doing a late night. Uh, after hours therapy session. Oh, to kind of get uh, put with the a fucking car- place. Yeah, he goes to a carny uh, a couple <laughs> times a week. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he hasn't been able to, you know, oh. help him with his anxiety. But he could guess his weight. I think. Oh, is that it? Within uh, within the, like a pound. Age your weight. Age your weight. Step up. <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry for you your w- session. You win the medication from this shelf or this shelf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So so it's uh it's it's a little stressful. Yeah, it really is yeah. uh not getting any better. Yeah. That's uh it's been a it's been a while. Really only six years or so uh, it? that it's been mm. but it's been a six year panic attack. <laughs> and the medications don't work? He doesn't he he can't handle the medications. No? Maybe yeah. a Xanax or something? No, he said that that makes him uh, anxious. Xanax makes him anxious. Thank God he's not using he's, it. He's the only person on the face of the earth that that happens to, I yeah. would gather. People take him recreationally. Maybe he's taking yeah. coffee. Don't. <laughs> yeah, wash it down with some espresso. Yeah. <laughs> coffee makes him drunk. It's just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you said you had a clip of that um, yeah. that uh, earthquake uh, when they were fez? Out. Yeah. It's probably the comic earthquake. I hear that. No, I hope not. Jesus. Let me hear a little of that, uh, Mr. Iraq. The person who really did Fez's mixtape, Kathleen from the Bronx, will tell you. That's right. Hey, Anthony, why don't you fucking talk to Kathleen? You feel this building moving? Yeah. Yep. What's that about? I don't... The floor's going up and down. Okay. <laughs> that, that's the main part. Oh, we'll be like, boy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So... Oh, ho- hotel. But did Hotel. you did you feel it where you were at all? Did you feel the earthquake? Uh, I was sleeping. Yeah, I just slept through the. My my chick came in, and uh, she was outside by the pool, mm. and uh, she's laying out by the pool. And she came in and and woke me up, and she goes, "Did you feel that?" I was like, "No, I, I was I was just sleeping. Feel what?" She goes, "It was just an earthquake." She goes, "The the tiki torches started moving." And then she goes, "The the the chandelier started going back and forth." I look at the chandelier over the dining room table. And it's moving, and I go, you push that fucking thing. And she goes, no, I swear I didn't. And then I look at the big one that's in the foyer. <laughs> I'm just bragging, by the way. <laughs> foyer, chandelier, foyer, tiki torches. chandelier, tiki torches. It is Mo Green's place. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully Anthony will get a massage. <laughs> My, My glasses eye. on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and that was shaking. Then I realized, all right, that would have to be a pretty good gag if she was you know, shaking that fucking thing. Because that's out of reach. So uh, I, I then believed well, the her. Weird thing is, like we just bounced up and down. We didn't yeah, that's side what I heard about side. this building was an up and down bouncing motion. Uh, that's what uh, the E Rock told me. Well, these floors are also raised, aren't they? Because they're not, uh, aren't they raised floors? Does that matter? I'm, I, as far I, as they are maybe, right maybe it does. Yeah, you know, that's why you feel it. Like I was expecting interns to come running by on the way somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> they. Uh, yeah, they said uh, the building went up and down and not side to side. Because you feel it kind of goes side to side in uh, high winds, which I'm thinking in the hurricane, uh, you're probably going to, if you're up here, you know, you'd feel it going side to side, which would really, thank God this is happening on a uh, on a weekend. Because uh, you'd have your hands full there, Ronnie. Well, the problem is he does live in a high rise himself. So, oh, he's still on Retard Island. Yeah, he is. <laughs> then uh, that, that island is—it's an island. That island is a flood zone. Yeah. that island is like being on a on a cruise ship. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, does he have any worries about uh, his... No, no, none at all. Everything's just uh, laid back and easy. <laughs> Hunky dory. <laughs> Take it as it comes, Spaz Watley. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking as it comes, Spaz. It's a. Uh, what is he thinking of doing uh, to... Well, to take his mind on it, he's got a book about cancer and what it does to the body, and he's just going to sit in his house and read that. I think it's called Brain Cancer. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to get out. I, mm. I keep talking about what do you have, this. What do you want? You, uh, the, of the building the show? No, no. He's got to get out. <laughs> you, fired radio? you fired him? No, How dare no you? I'm not firing Fez. But, but I don't understand why you say he's got to get out. Like He's, he's not ruining anything. No, I no, no, out and oh, about, well. out on the town, not on the town. He wants him to live a good life. Yeah, he doesn't want him to have get a out little of here. Fun. Man, it's weird, though. He's got to get out, like, and you're, like, looking around the radio <laughs> station, like, all of a sudden he's spoiling things. No, no, no. I never said that and would never right, say no, that. Whatever, okay. I don't hear the same things you do. <laughs> I don't have ears. I hear, I said it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I don't get it. All right, no, cool. Because uh, when, I've seen <laughs> Fez, when I've seen Fez at his happiest mm. uh, uh, years ago... It was when we were all out, right, and having and partying and having some fun, and uh, you know those little get-togethers we used to have. This right. might be all he has. Radio might be all he has. <laughs> He's got to get out. He's yeah. got to get out. He's got to leave. Now, he doesn't have. You're right about that, Jimmy. He doesn't have like a personal life right now. Right. He needs one. And this, yeah, is, this yeah. is what he does. His whole thing is, is this is this station. And you're like fucking. What is he down? Make it give a downer for you, and all of a sudden he's got to go. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. I heard what Jim heard. I was uh, I was saying he's got to get Why out. Why can't of his we all house? stay? We can all of, stay. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to get out. <laughs> why Why can't? Because he, he does need to just be out in, in social. Settings instead of working in radio, it doesn't seem right. No, yeah, no, why no. wouldn't you want no. him here? He's been with you. F- I'm saying, do the show, do the show, and then on a different channel. No, no, <laughs> exactly as it is now. Everyone heard you, dude. He needs yeah. to get out and 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 just like socialize. No, 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 still with the show. Everyone's Ron nervous Fez. about the earthquake. Ron and Fez show. People like Fez 11 here. o'clock. Fez is there doing the show just like always, right? And then and then afterwards. You go out. You, you 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 meet some people. You you socialize and you forget about your troubles. You don't want him in the studio. And never come back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I'm trying to get him to move to Chelsea. Yeah, maybe a West Village. Yeah, somewhere. Just around get there. out there. Yeah. Has there been any? Um... None. <laughs> <laughs> none. You just answer it immediately. Yeah. None. Uh, and any any uh, uh, headway on that um, on that secret thing? Because I haven't over the over the years. I, I know what secret thing? Secret. What, what, what's what secret? Is there a new co-host being sought? <laughs> no. I, Why are you asking I about that, Ant? I didn't say that. I knew weird. like Fezzi has a secret, but I don't know what it is, and I th- thought maybe I'd missed what it was. Right. And uh, I just was trying to clear that up to see if maybe that out. that's come out. Um, and, no, it's a desire that still has not been acted upon. Uh huh. Even though he told me the secret's coming up on three years ago, it is and that three was years. A gigantic now. relief to him, and I'm like, "Good, buddy, let's do it. Let's yeah, get yeah. out there." He was relieved telling you. Yeah. Now, wouldn't that you would would, would you think he'd be more relieved than telling everybody, getting or, that all off his uh, chest, and or even doing the secret? He hasn't. Oh, it's a oh oh it's a. Uh, it's it's something that can be done. It's a, yeah. an activity. Right. He hasn't oh, done right. any of the activity. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's no secret now. Right. Yeah. All right. I will tell you well, this, though. how about that? In that three years, I've sucked 18 dicks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the odd you're, thing you're, about it. You're Weird. St- you still have a show. You have to yeah. around this fucking place. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God! That's yeah, Scott. A... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, another meeting. Oh, yeah. I get Black it. Read. <laughs> <Right? laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, are you uh, are you all hooked up for this uh, uh, hurricane? Where Where are you? Where are you? Low lying area? Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm living. Uh, I live in a mountain. Oh, you're fine. And uh, yeah, the mountains are. Uh, you know, it's New York. You're not going to get in any trouble. Here, Nothing, right? What yeah. the fuck are they talking about? Manhattan. They, they're watching too many of these Discovery Channel uh, computer animations of what could happen to New York City. 
that ain't ever going to happen. I saw some of those where they were showing like Long Island City being swamped. Just completely yeah. underwater, like Planet of the Apes. The, the fucking the Statue of Liberty is down there. Heston's, <laughs> Heston's pounding the beach. <laughs> There's fucking people from uh, 125th Street chasing Jimmy's them. Jimmy's actually doing a Statue of Liberty right here now as he eats. <laughs> I'm eating my yogurt. I'm trying not to eat as many carbs, and um, I'm holding the mic up in the air. But I hold it, so if I want to say something, I can drag it back down. Ah, good. But I'm like fucking old, a fucking hawk mouth yesterday. I don't want to chew into the mic. <laughs> you mean people can hear this? We Unfortunately. Don't, we, we really don't care, though. Eh, I know. That wouldn't be rude. When it's us. When it's a guest, we can then jump on him. That was uh, great yesterday, having uh, Voss and, and uh, Bob Kelly in here and just, just slamming. The idea that Bob Kelly went... Down to uh, to friggin' West Virginia or wherever it was to pay people fifty dollars for a bucket of dirt to find gems in. You know oh, that old god, gag? yeah, like like your, your dad would pull over when you were doing road right, trips. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get some uh, dinosaur fossils, and they would give you this. You'd be at this big dirt thing with a, a screen with some wood around it, and and shake it, and be like, hey, there it is. Look, you got yourself a dinosaur bone. Bobby did this, like, for real. At age 40. And what yeah, was, yeah. And what was even better about it was he came here to say, no, I'm not a sucker. I'm telling you guys, I found out it's a scam. Yeah, I found <laughs> like, out it's a scam. This is news. Right. It's a scam. So he went initially not thinking it was a scam. They gave him, he goes, you could go out with, that with your own shovel in your own bucket and pick up your own dirt and find some gems. Or you could just buy a bucket of dirt that they already <laughs> picked up and put in. So we just bought the bucket. There's a fifty dollar bucket, a two hundred dollar. It's like buying buckets of dirt. But I'm like, you dumb. You don't think that they would sift through that? Like, how could any adults not think that yeah. they would look through it before giving it to not, you? No, there were rubies in there, emeralds. It's like he's fucking in uh, uh, sub-Saharan Africa digging. <laughs> there's uh, there's nothing there. That, uh, if, anything, gems if anything happens to Americans, it's the fucking Americans' fault. I mean, yeah. we've been around long enough to see every angle, and then right. we just drop it and fall back into it. Right into it. There should be no infomercial that fucking fools an American, <laughs> and yet people are fucking dialing away at 3 o'clock in the morning. People are getting rich off of these fucking products that, yeah, yeah. They should. The infomercials. Churches. Uh, make people dial, and they, they make everything look difficult. Normal thing. Putting a sheet on a bed can be a problem. And, and the woman's hair is a mess. And they make the bed. And then, and then it ends with the woman just going like, blowing her bangs up. She's all disheveled. But now, and now they figured out a way to make you buy two of everything. You're not getting a free one. Stop it. Buy now. Order now. But wait. Order now and get a second one absolutely free. Just pay separate shipping and handling. So now you're getting the second one. They're making you buy. They force you to buy two things. It's astounding. And no one ever says to you, I've had this thing for 18 years, and it's just been really great. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm well, still using it. When they pitch it, it just sounds so good. Everything just sounds so good. Does this it be Sam, the cure. Does it? It's going to work. They say it works. Is there anything that you've ever seen on an infomercial that looked good, that, that you would actually order and be like, that I can use. Right. No. And it's never a necessity. There's nothing. There's no, never no. like food, no, water. No. It's just stuff you, shoot, you fucking don't need. I like that little claw that you can grab things off the top shelf with. <laughs> <laughs> because that's got to be great for handling heavy glass products. <laughs> like fucking sauce. <laughs> that's what the carnies use to yeah. take the stuffed animals down yeah. to give to the kids. And they just translate it into what they uh, but, sell people now. But the, the, a lot of that shit is just aimed towards the elderly. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. everything oh, hurts. Yeah, so yeah. now you will have this claw so you won't have to call your nephew to come over anymore. <laughs> yeah, annoy him. Or, to, or fat people not how you can wash your back and put your shoe on the shoehorn one. You see that? Oh, the it's a shoe shoehorn horn on, on a stick. stick. Yeah, that is, that's like something Kramer would come up with. <laughs> a shoehorn on a stick so you don't have to bend over. God forbid you get yourself back into any kind of shape where you can put your own fucking shoes on. You're yeah. better off handing that guy a handgun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what they don't really say is to wipe your ass with. Yeah. Of course, you can't reach your ass anymore. Yeah. Perfect. There Toilet was, paper on a stick. There was that one where uh, you, for people that couldn't reach, uh, for toilet paper to wipe their ass oh. with. If you're too, but they didn't even put it if you're too fat. It was injured, if you're or... injured, or your back hurts, and it was uh, people wiping their ass with this fucking claw that held the toilet paper. And you're you like, reach under or something. Filthy, and... How filthy is that thing? I'd hate to be served potato salad with somebody's claw <laughs> that did like, double duty. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was, was the uh, Beverly Hillbillies, I think, used it to fucking pass food around. Yeah. Well, look at what we got here, Jethro. <laughs> At the fancy eating table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pass me some hog jowls, kid. Uh, let me get the comfort wipe. That's what it was called. Comfort, look at this. comfort wipe. Yeah. And Turn you put the volume the, up. I got to hear this one. You put the one. paper in the fucking thing. This is sickening. disgusting. Oh, God. Scrunching and folding Scrunching. toilet paper. See, they make it. Finally, there's a better How bad way. life works. Comfort wipe. The sanitary paper. Sanitary. Arm and holder. The first improvement to toilet paper as we know it since the 1880s. Oh. It <laughs> happened in the 1880s. 18 inches. While it follows the contours <laughs> of your body and wiped with his own cleans. scalp. It's as easy to use <laughs> the as Indian a shower brush. Just pop on the toilet to wipe their ass. Through, <laughs> just press the release button and the tissue drops right into the How toilet. How hard. Uh, uh, toilet paper is really archaic and disgusting. Disgusting. The comfort wipe is yeah, that isn't. Solution. To put it on That's at the end right. of a stick. Never touch another <laughs> Gives you an extra two feet of reach. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Biggins. Disadvantages. This is a great product. It's embarrassing to have someone help you with your personal matters. <laughs> <laughs> your personal matters. Uh, maintain your dignity. Sounds like Patty. Sounds yeah. yeah. like Patty. Your Come dignity. The sanitary paper extension arm and holder. The first By the way, do you know how horribly that must wipe your ass? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally just being gripped. It's like it probably <laughs> smears <laughs> shit all over your butt cheeks. <laughs> and you know, it's probably it, the paper's so got to slip out. Yeah, I would hope so. So you're, now you you got that thing. You got shit on it. Doesn't want to touch dirty toilet paper. Don't be embarrassed. Just get a comfort wipe. Order now. And what do you leave up by the side of the bowl? Yeah. So the young young kids that are visiting the house can look and go, oh, they chase each other with it. <laughs> you, you can't oh. flush in the trailer anyway. <laughs> you gotta put it that... in and out of the tub has never been more comfortable. Oh, yeah, that, they're including that the grip. Have, that doesn't have a lawsuit. It's the same all thing, over. so you can shit in the tub. I love the way she said, You help with your personal matters. Personal matters. Personal matters. They serve your dignity. <laughs> That's right, Patty. I used to date a girl whose mom used to buy that stuff every now and then. And as soon as she got it, she would try to show us how great it was. But it would never work Doesn't or she work, could never right. hook it up right. Like the yeah. book light that wouldn't clamp onto a book and she couldn't keep her page or anything. No, it's great, oh, though. It's all right. Well, the, when the UPS guy drops that off, he turns around and runs before you can get it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know that piece of shit is coming back. Uh, hand Hander pants? The underpants for your hands. What? This can't be real. I mean, it's a parody. Yeah. Yeah. That's, there's a lot of parodies, parodies out there. I, uh, well, I fuck. hate the parody. Yeah, that was... Uh, I, I, I can't imagine that that toilet paper would stay there. So then now there's shit on the stick. Yeah. And you got to put it somewhere. Dude, when I wipe my ass, I fucking wrap the toilet paper around my finger. Do you? Yes. There's, there's an art to fucking... <laughs> you can't just take it... That's the equivalent of taking a rubber band and taking one sheet and banding it to your hand and <laughs> flat wiping your asshole. That's even worse because it pinches the paper. The, so the, in the middle, right? Where right, you need so it the doesn't go in mat. the crack. It you're, goes you're around, around a little. around your ass, Ugh. not the dirty part. Like you're, you're not getting to, the bullseye. It's got to go outwards, not yeah. in. That should you're be a double bull every time. The double bull. You got <laughs> If you go to someone's house, you go to a girl's house, you should always look in the bathroom for a comfort wipe before you commit to eating her ass. <laughs> <laughs> if you see one of those, avoid it at all costs. <laughs> Can we hear her talk again? A dignity. Yeah, oh, I feel your like personal it. matters. It's, a great product. it's embarrassing to have someone help you with your personal matters. <laughs> the comfort wipe allows you to maintain your dignity. Her shoulder comes out. Your personal hygiene. She reminds me of comfort Helen Bergeron. Wipe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> why does she need people to help her? Exactly. You look perfectly healthy. Yeah. Well, maybe we didn't see. She's got no arms. But yeah, exactly. No hands. <laughs> yeah. You should just use a little Filipino kid to be in there yeah, helping you yeah. out. When he's not wiping your ass, he's setting off fireworks yeah. in your living room as you snort lines. <laughs> Motor rain. <laughs> That's a movie I could watch. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good one, man. Yeah. Fuck, is Boogie yeah. Nights great, yeah. man? Boogie Nights is a good one. God, it's a good movie. <laughs> you're not being fair. <laughs> Crash, fair. I can watch over and over. Oh, yeah, you're not the Crash. I can watch that anytime time I can watch I hated it. Crash, the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't a fan yeah, of that, that one. I didn't like it. Oh, you're all wrong. No, oh, well, jeez. Fuck us running. Wow, I'm surprised. Think, uh, no. Terrence Howard's one of the best black characters ever. Not really. Why is he got to be a black character? <laughs> you're racist. Why'd you hate that? I don't see people. I don't, I I thought it was, I don't either. I, I, there's something very surface to me about it. Like, really? Yeah, I thought it was shallow. I thought it was... Are you being sarcastic? No. I, I thought it was a good statement about... Uh, it was, showed you the good, the kind of the duality of every person. I thought it was too obvious. 
Yeah, jumped on like Riz like a really look, stereotype. Oh, the, the, cop, the bad cop now looks. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's not always yeah. the bad. Cop. I think that was kind of the point of it though, because Hollywood always yeah. vilifies the fucking white cop, and they always they never attack the way they fucking they whiten up black people. They never go after that. You never see a guy like Tony Danza going, "Hey, could you make him seem a little smarter, you or a little dumber or whatever?" You never yeah. hear that shit. And Terrence Howard, they show how that fucking affects. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to I watch it again. It. I don't know. Love and they also they also don't vilify the cops because then this guy's well he's fucking he's pulling this chick. To me that was a representative of the fucking white cops in the black community. Like, yeah, the guy's a piece of shit sometimes, but he's crawling into a burning car to pull you out. Like there really is it, it's not just easy to vilify these cops as these fucking awful How many of these cops are fingering the fucking chick though? But, but again, it was symbolic. To me it was all symbolic. In the fifties. Yeah, in the fifties that used to happen. They would but do that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. It was hey, symbolic. And my how, finger the colored broad. And how many times <laughs> would you finger a chick and pull her out of a burning car? I mean, you know, two out of three maybe, but it's not gonna happen every time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Terrence I, Howard? Oh. Yeah, I thought everybody you embarrass was... embarrass me? You embarrass, embarrass yourself? It's one of the best lines ever. Yeah. Yeah, Luda, Come on. Fucking ludicrous. We're, we look... They're, they're walking around look like college students. They're like, why are they afraid of us? He's like, oh, another fucking message from a movie. And then they pull out the gun and they rob Sandra <laughs> yeah, Bullock. Yeah, was she was good. right to be scared of the blacks. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I like that accurate part. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? They fucking... And well, like, they're... I didn't think it got complex at all. Like, I thought everybody was just sort of very... Cut and dry, like, okay, now we're doing this bad part, now we're good part, now we're bad part, now we're good part. And everybody was just kind of following exact stereotypes. Like, there wasn't any sort of I kind of like that. I mean, stimulation. Again, because there were so many people to show. Like, they didn't, like, the little girl didn't get shot. Like, you think she's going to, like, here's another cliche. They don't do it. Or the fucking fat black woman who uh, will not help Matt Dillon. All of a sudden, you're like, even though you can't say, I know I know why he hates blacks, you can go, yeah, well, that is fucking enraging. Mm. You, he's not crazy to be angry all the time. And then you see what a cunt she is racially when that fucking Asian woman hits her at the end. She's out screaming, this Asian bitch. So she's doing the same shit that he did to her. It's like they don't just this vilify. This movie sounds confusing They now. don't just vilify the same people. I, you, it's almost like you're talking about the Godfather, the way you move by this. <laughs> I've, never met, I've never ran into anyone I who's loved, watched Crash so many times. I know. I lo- but, wow. but that's why it won Best Screenplay that year. It fucking upset every movie. Nobody thought well, that was going to it was also work. like that L.A. let's all feel good about L.A. Yeah. You know, we know we're Hollywood. I thought I it was, don't know, something about it just fucking annoyed me. I thought it was anti-LA. I, and like, a, I, anti what they normally do. Absolutely. It was, I, I it think, was anti the rest of LA. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, yeah, we know we live in a shithole because we're sensitive artists. <laughs> yeah. Which kind of made it LA. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right, right. I, I, I don't know. I thought Cheadle was fucking Cheadle's great. Cheadle's a good actor, yeah. I, you, I, I, I didn't I like see him. the thing about that being his brother coming, that relationship with his mother I thought was great. Um, wow, you remember yeah, every I, I really do. I no. love the first time I saw it. I loved because I kept waiting for them to do what I knew they were going to do, and every time they didn't. It's, it's, it's yeah. always the same. You know, Nick DiPaolo cries about, you know, and justifiably how white men are <clears throat> always made to look a certain way. All they do in every one. Oh, look, it's the black female judge. Oh, because it's these fucking pandering. I like the fat, sassy black female judge in a movie. But it's oh, it's so fun. That's Hollywood's idea yeah. of a fucking redeeming black character. Oh. They do the same thing. You never see a guy like Terrence Howard snapping uh, after being white this whole movie and beaten down by Hollywood and saying shit like that to fucking. Uh, and then the good white cop who's the hero in every movie turns out to act like a racist, like every other fucking panicky white person, and he kills the guy. Who he shouldn't have killed. That mm. that white cop is the hero in wow. every movie. I, I, he's the fucking. He's, I, I'm, I'm, I I'm gotta go back and say it. He's the fucking. I can't remember any that of this white show. cop is it. the hero in every movie. He's the guy who understands the the minorities. He doesn't react. It's just the pig Matt Dillon. Maybe well, I was watching Porky's. But in the end, fucking know, Matt I Dillon, thought. the horrible guy, fucking pulls a chick out of a car and he fucking panics and shoots a guy and dumps on the side of the road. Mm. Yeah, and it obviously would never happen that way. But to me, it really, it fucking, it flipped roles a lot, which moved. I liked. You were moved. I was, you I were. loved it. Look at I that. loved it. You gotta see Big Lebowski. <laughs> that was, it. That was really good. I did recently, recently, yeah. just the other day. It's the old, first time I've ever seen it. Now, I've heard about uh, the Big Lebowski for many years. Uh, and I, I. You never saw it? Never. Never. Until just oh, last week. I, I watched it. And then, like, right when it ended. I'm sitting there going like, all right, what was all the hype about this movie? Yeah. What the fuck was all the hype? But then I realized like, 
I started thinking about some of the lines and, and laughing and thinking that that was kind of funny. It's one of those movies you got to watch a few times. The Cullen Brothers, it's never a first-time watch. Right. It's always watching it over and over. Yeah, like Fargo, I could watch now yes. and still laugh my ass off. But the first time I watched it, I was pretty much like, all right, this is kind of a crime right. kidnapping thing going on. Yeah. But then you realize how fucking funny it is. It's almost like a parody of those kind of movies, yeah. you know. Yeah. Somebody and explained something to Big Lebowski to me. They were talking about like when you when you write a character, or whatever you do, and they were saying like in the opening scene. And I have only seen it once years ago. He walks into a store and writes a check for milk or something. Yeah. Right. And they're like, in that moment, you know who this guy is. I'm like, that, that's a smart. Yeah, sometimes that's like true. little yeah, character yeah, things yeah. tell yeah. you in a in a second exactly who the, the fucking way he was guy is. And the, the, you think so always dragging a white Russian. Yeah, yeah, the fucking. Thing he was in not too long ago. I know, yeah. I I'm, I'm giving away that by the, if you, in the football contest. If you go to two or two friends, we got to sign Big Lebowski, oh, wow. which to these fucking people is going to oh, mean the world to them. That's gold. But you got to be able to do some football picks. Yeah. You guys aren't football gamblers, I I know. No, no. Gamble on a few things, but not. Football. I already have a signed Big Lebowski anyway. Do you? I've got juice here. <laughs> What? <laughs> did, did, did you really? Yes, but I wasn't here. I couldn't meet him. Wow. I was too tired. I had to take TV. Oh, but I was God, fucking... I love, I love him. That movie just... And that movie absolutely made me want a white Russian. That's what... Right, that yeah. was the biggest impact on it. And, and we... And I and we, I, I went right down to the bar and made a white Russian. Yeah. And was like, God damn, these things are good. They're so tasty. And it was funny how it would just stick in his beard. Stick in his beard. And mustache the whole time. So it is one of those. I, I guess i got to watch it a few more hundred but, times. But the Coen brothers, all their fucking films yep. are like that. They are so good. I'll watch Raising Arizona over and over. I don't over. know if I've seen that more than once years ago. It's, it's Nicolas Cage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it's, not a single setup line in that movie. Every movie is every line in the movie is the punchline. Yeah, it's so fucking funny. Brother, where and art thou? Is it, another one. It actually showed you how crazy white people were going to be. It was like a futuristic look of the way life is now, in 2011, <laughs> where white people become the craziest people we have. <laughs> Was, wasn't he like a male escort in that or something, or prostitute? No. no. Which one am I thinking of? With uh... <laughs> no, it was a. Uh, uh... G- uh, Leaving Las Vegas? No, 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 no. no Gigolo, no. American Gigolo? No, no, no. I love, uh, who doesn't love Call Me uh, as an opening song? <laughs> Call me! <laughs> well, who's the old twat he was banging in that? That was like a Lauren Bacall or something? Go back and watch that thing. It's so funny and dated because it's like he is picking out ties by Call Me Plays for three minutes. It's just <laughs> the opening three minutes. He's just pulling out his clothes hey, and looking at it. They bought the rights to the song. Yeah. They wanted yeah. to get every yeah. fucking drop out of it. But anything like from the 70s moves so much slower than people yeah, can yeah. possibly pay attention to. Planet That's of the Apes was true. on, God and there's like a 20-minute scene where they're driving through the desert. You know, they're just walking through the desert. Yeah. They're looking at the beginning, the beginning when yeah the ship hits the the, the lake yeah they get up they kind of sort themselves out and then they walk that walk is just like a fucking documentary about the desert it's a fucking it's true yeah they're just walking around the desert play it Lauren Hutton I'm sorry is this a <laughs> he's driving it starts with the credits huh yeah and uh, yeah yeah. It is a good opening song, but like I think Ron is right. They did go, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just different times where people need faster, faster things. Yeah. Play, Richard Gere plays a great woman fucking. He's a great guy who would absolutely fuck your woman and could. Yeah, like he's a great like in uh, internal yeah, affairs. He has in his ass, though. Yeah, I heard that. I was like, what is he got? He must be. <laughs> He must be so angry that that's still a story. Exactly. <laughs> Richard Gere never has a friend in a movie. You ever notice? Like, oh, he's just, he's that just is never the... close enough that's to hilarious. anyone to have an actual friend. I never realized that <laughs> shit. There's, there's a right. coldness to him. He never has a friend. And he's You're a, right. What's the, what's the line he says to Andy Garcia in uh, Internal Affairs? Something about your, your wife. He goes, how about this? I'm going to fuck her in the ass. I'll <laughs> teach her how to come. And it's like, oh. oh like you brutal. fucking. Imagine that. Like you knew he could do that. And you brutal. feel that. How that's being said about your woman. <laughs> oh, is he great. Did you like burn after reading? Yeah. Not as much. No? Not as much, yeah. And I, uh, saw, I it. saw it. You didn't like it though? No, I thought it was all right. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's, uh, you know, worth uh, discussing. Yeah. Like crash. That's stopping everything. Yeah, talking exactly. about Coen Brothers. 
Yeah, well, no one wants to talk about that. What one. are we talking about here? We're talking about the Coen brothers, right? Yeah, right. That's what we're talking yeah. about. Was, was that it? Oh, yeah. God, wait. What are we talking about? We're talking about the leads, right? All right. <laughs> you got the leads? <laughs> Another yeah. one I can never not watch. Yeah. Holy shit, is that good? Which one? Fucking Glenn Gary, Gary Glenn Ross. Ross. Oh, well. Jack Lemon. Yeah. To watch him fucking scold Kevin Spacey and then throw that piece of candy oh, in his God. mouth. <laughs> that motherfucker could act. Wow, well, was he, he good. Was so fucking brilliant. Oh. You shouldn't work with men. Yeah. <laughs> the you know what the problem is? You're an asshole. Throws it in his mouth and walks. <laughs> fucking master. Who am I? Who am I? This watch costs as much as your car. That's who I am, and you are shit. Yeah. <laughs> What's my name? Fuck you. That's my name. You're a good father. Fuck you. Yeah. Take it home. Uh, Alec Baldwin will always be from the, like he did two minutes in that film that is better than most people's fucking movies. It's probably ever the, done. I can't think of a better cameo ever in ever. a film. Than, yeah. than him and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. He just came in, dominated it, and left. And that was it. Yeah. And they were smart, too, because in that movie, the conflict, because Ricky Roma, who was Pacino, he was not in that scene. Right. It was perfect. And when you look, that conflict would have been too much. Right, because he, because Ricky Roma was on top then, so he wasn't going to take any of that shit. Yeah. Everybody that was in that scene could get fired. Ricky was the only one who was making his fucking sales money. So if you put him in there, you would have had one confident guy that would have brought everybody else but everyone else was just taking shit and was only over money yeah nothing else <laughs> and this week's money <laughs> i'm fucking believable how good that movie that is. was such a i saw the, a you saw the play yes. i went to the play because it was uh leave schreiber i think played the ricky right. roma role and alan alda i just went i'm obsessed with alan alda and he played shelly everyone should be yes. as far as i'm concerned yes but uh he was good but he made a really weird character choice uh tom wolpat was in it and uh, I f uh, oh Jeffrey Tambor, mm. I forget who Tambor played. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm he's... still getting over the Tom Wopat part. Yeah, <laughs> wow. He From was... the Dukes of oh, Hazard, very good. Yeah. Jeffrey Tambor, as far as I'm concerned, should always be throwing plates down a hallway after shaving his head. If anybody remembers <laughs> so Justice yeah. for All, <laughs> Mr. Soames did it again. <laughs> <laughs> fucking he's great. Just... <laughs> Jeffrey Tambor is one of the great. All-time fucking great actors. How about the Ropers sitcom? Remember him in that? Yeah. As the fucking, what was he, the landlord? Oh, the my Ropers? God, the Ropers. <laughs> yeah. Was that awful? He's great. Larry Sanders, when he fucking played that part on Larry Sanders, it might have been the best thing that's ever happened on TV. I never saw probably more than five minutes of Larry Sanders. Really? I should go oh, back God. and watch the series. I've heard it's great. Yeah. He is fucking amazing. Hank Kingsley yeah. is the most amazing fucking character that's ever been on TV. Do you think it would hold up if I got the box set now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's, all the seasons are on Netflix. If you and it's, that, it's, a, it's okay. a total fucking rail on talk shows, too. So it's, it's just a great... Yeah, but I don't go for that, on. though. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> Sorry that you don't go for nah, that. Nah, just, you know, there's no reason to tear down my, your house to make my house look nicer. <laughs> uh, we got to take a break and be uh, What time and, is it? Uh, be you know coming right. in today, Ron? You know Mike Buschetti? No. Huh? Comedian buddy of mine. God, yeah. fucking, uh, I thought you guys were going to have a big... Uh, big, like, party Friday. Yeah, but I thought you had a big thing? political guest today, and then uh, she backed up. Uh, we have Pat Oswalt, but he... Uh, mm. <laughs> I think he's doing, uh, he's shooting today, I think. Oh, shooting? Because of uh, the weather or something. Like, like Lee Harvey Oswald, right? But I thought you had one no, of your no, Fox not, friends. Not Oswald. <laughs> uh, really? Like, um... I, I forget who I was told. Oh, Ann Coulter. Ann Someone Coulter? Told me Ann Coulter was going to be here. Is Ann coming today? I saw her. She was on uh, Hannity last night. She's probably mm. in bed still. Yeah. She hates getting up in the morning. Oh, you know why? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, boy. She can a few back. Let me tell you something. I have never seen a bigger bunch of drunks than at Fox, mm. Fox News. It, it's amazing. And I guess that, look, I've never been over to CNN, but I would think it's the same thing. Sure. Uh, it's just that news atmosphere, that whole thing. They, they get done, and they go right to the bar. Mm. It's amazing. I loved it. <laughs> the, uh, the thing, too, I, I've known news people. They're the only people who really talk to psychics a lot because I don't think any of them know exactly what, the news business, what makes you popular and what makes you oh, not popular. In the news, but yeah, yeah. What, what, what is it? You're just telling the news. Yeah, you don't know why somebody is like, this person I like, this person I don't like, this person I trust, this person I don't. So they're all never sure where the ratings come from. Oh, this. Oh, this. you mean like the experts and stuff? Yeah, like the oh. readers and stuff. Like, 
why somebody would pick Brian Williams over the other guy reading the news. Like here, you know if you have a good show, right? right. Yeah. But if you're in there doing the news, you don't know why one show worked and the other show doesn't. So they leave, they get drunk, they call up psychics. What do you think? Should I buy this house? What should I do? <laughs> They're all nervous all the time. I didn't know that. Another it's- movie, Network. Oh, oh, yeah, that works great. Fuck, yeah, maybe the great. best screenplay of all time. Yeah, well, yeah. you see what a genius Patty Chayefsky was because he foreshadowed fucking uh, reality TV. Like the, 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 uh, the uh, what was this, the Symbian Liberation Army, whatever they were, right. to, 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 to see in 1976 that that is yeah. exactly That's what, entertainment. Fuck. It's not just fucking craziness. Yeah, not yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. Amazing, and or the way like, hey, look, uh, uh, he he was gonna, Beals was going to shoot himself. I could see that now, being teased and people being kept on television. You know, maybe not now, but twenty years from now, it was brilliant, fucking brilliant. Yeah, didn't he die after winning the Oscar, Peter Finch? Yeah, he never made it to the Oscar. Oh, he didn't. Actually. He, he died right before Jeez. the Oscar. Cost Stallone the fucking thing, because Stallone was like, hey, maybe I'll win the Oscar, and then the other guy dies. Fuck you, uh, Stallone. Yeah, goodbye. You get nothing. <laughs> was he actor best? Oh, I, I would have thought Peter Finch was supporting actor. No. You might really? be right. Because Holden was uh, obviously the lead in that movie. And how good was fucking, uh, Jesus, oh, uh, Madness, Diana. Uh, oh, oh her. my God. Not, uh, it's not Jessica Lange. Uh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, Faye Dunaway. Faye Dunaway. Oh, Faye Dunaway. Yeah, she was amazing. I was just going to look down until somebody I think she won for that, answer. too. She, sh- she uh, won. Did she, yeah? Yeah. Jeez, God, the best is when he's, when, when he's like, she's like, this is, then don't leave. And her coffee is shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was great to watch her fucking come unraveled. Cunt. Oh, was she awful. What was, uh, what was uh, Stallone up for there? Lords Probably of Flatbush? Ro- no, Rocky. <laughs> Lords of Flatbush. <laughs> Lords of Flatbush. <laughs> Death Race 2000? As Lords Machine Gun Joe for Turbo? <laughs> uh, I'll never turn off Lords of Flatbush. No. Though. I fucking like love them. Yeah. Any stupid 50 movies. I'll watch. Like the uh, Wanderers? Yeah, Wanderers is a great fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. Wanderers, that one. Yeah. Dolph, wasn't Dolph Sweet in that? Was he in that one? Dolph yeah, Sweet? he played the girl's father. He played somebody's father. He dropped a bowling ball in somebody's hand. That was the uh, Wanderers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one with the uh, Ducky Boys. and. Uh... Yeah. He'll kill you, Perry. Yeah. I wonder if like any of the listeners have 20 hours a day to fucking watch movies the way we do. <laughs> you know, it really, it really is astounding. My God, these guys watch a lot of movies. How many movies can be watched in a day? I uh, and yesterday, yesterday I, I got home and just I crapped right the fuck out. Ah, oh, if you fought, people what? know it for a week, big oh. man. <laughs> Your farts. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But the sleeping habits in, in this job are really fucked up. Terrible. Because I, I, I could go home and go right to sleep yeah. and sleep until 10 at night. I can do that. Absolutely. And I did it uh, yesterday. I woke up a couple of times. but uh, and, and then I was up from 10 until I came in. Like a crazy person. And You're like just wandering around. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else to do. So I'm watching, I'm watching fucking movies. Just watching dumb movies. Movies I've seen. Movies I haven't seen. But there's plenty of time. Plenty of time to watch television, sh- dumb shows. You do that, and then you look up old girlfriends on the internet. Who's, uh, <laughs> who's uh, Facebook, yeah, man. Yeah, I remember her. She's fat. They're all hyphenated. You're like, oh, you <laughs> fucking whore. I'm married. <laughs> yeah. When I think back, though, at that, I think like, oh, yeah, what am I going to do? It's a 50-year-old woman. Right. 50-year-old woman. You know, I'm remembering 19, 19, 1919, 19, actually. I'm remembering <laughs> 19. I'm remembering some of these girls at 19 years old, and... You know, fun and just fucking in a schoolyard somewhere because that was the only place to go. And, like and, like dogs. Yeah, like, like dogs. Like fucking <laughs> dogs when you're a kid. You Anywhere. Most people, the first time they fuck is outside. Yeah. This is how fu- how crazy we are. It's because there wasn't many opportunities or locations no. to fuck. It was, it was hard to get your own apartment right? Uh, when you're in your uh, early uh, or mid-teens. When we, in my neighborhood, we were such... And now look back on it, it seems scum, scumbaggy. We would fucking unpark cars. Like, who would do this? <laughs> on, on them? Yes. No, in. You'd oh, okay. fucking open you up don't, go well, in. that's when people yeah. would leave oh, you their just try Random cars? Just go up. There's a fucking oh, car God. unlocked. Let's fucking go in. Go in yeah. and fuck in the car. And then, like, fucking girls lost their virginity in these unlocked cars. <laughs> And now you're like, this, and at the time you're like, this is fucking great. Come in. This is perfect. <laughs> Holy We're living shit. like gentlemen here. Where are the kids fucking these days? I don't know. Where are the kids fucking? Um, I think they're allowed to fuck inside now. In their house. Like, 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 like the their mothers. Let yeah. them and, and she, 
Because it was, always, like you said, outside. I remember doing a lot of outdoor fucking. Yeah. And, and you had to do it wherever the opportunity came up because the opportunities weren't like every night. It's right. like, hey, we can't fuck tonight. I'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah. No, it, like things had to align. The planets had to be perfect. You know, the, 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 the girl's parents had to let her out. That would be a certain movie playing. Another right. friend had to say she was coming along. It was like this big thing that worked out. And it was like, wow, we're alone. We have a place to fuck. And then you, you did your fucking. It was very difficult to uh, to to get a girl and and have some sex back then. Yeah, I I, I do I, I did have a car though, so that was mm. kind of an easier thing to do having your own vehicle. But uh, it, it was a big it was a big Ford pickup truck, <laughs> and so there wasn't much room in the bench seat in the front with the steering wheel there on the gear shift. And uh, I, I used to park in the woods. And everyone knew I was there, like my friends. So I would hear, thank God, this friend of mine, Dave, he had an old 40 Conaline van uh, that just had a horrible valve tick. So I could hear it just coming from quite some ways away. Right. And no, it's like, shit, I have to get up and, and zip up because uh, he'd probably fucking start Do you remember the making smell, fun of me or something. The smell of the, like, I remember my friend Dean had a, a fucking VW van or his Volkswagen car, and the smell of your friend's cars, it was like weird. VWs had distinct smells for some it had reason. had a fucking cool, like, gasoline or yeah. an old smell even back then. It just air cooled, air-cooled engine that, it, well, the heat from the engine actually came off your, your exhaust mm. pipes, and uh, it was, yeah, it was cowled in and then uh, pumped into the, uh, into, the uh, uh, into your front seat. It was fucked oh. up because cause sometimes the exhaust would rot and you'd get right. you'd just get exhaust into your... You'd be a little fucking headache, but high yeah. a little bit from it. Yeah, but, like, you're, oh, right. but cars were so much louder then. Like you fucking... Now you, you don't even know if your car's on. You right. just you yeah, turn yeah. it. But then every car had a, a sound. Yeah, and, you know? and, and sometimes a car could be pulling up right behind you and you don't know until it's right there. Yeah. That never happened. No. You're, bah, <laughs> it was, and that was a new car. After a while, things would go wrong with it, and you'd always hear, like, the fan belt. Right. Or the fan hitting on something. <laughs> Brakes squealing. Things just work better now. I don't know. They figured it out. You don't see rusted cars anymore. No, you don't. Fucking rusted cars where everyone's car was rusted. And when's the last time you just saw, like, kids working on a car? It yeah, just doesn't happen. doesn't like, happen. Now, you possible. remember there were certain guys in your neighborhood that would just always have a car up on blocks, always be doing something yeah, to it. The motor Guy, Neighbors coming over, looking in. Yeah. What's going on? Never happens. If you had a question, days. you'd go over his house and yeah. be like, yeah, I mean, right, let me take a look. <laughs> and a couple of turns of a screwdriver or something. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, you distribute it. I just adjusted the timing a little bit. It's, yeah, not, you don't do that anymore. It doesn't happen. None of that shit. Because there's fucking computers where the engine should be. Yeah, you got, you, got to, <laughs> you got to take it in and they plug a fucking something that plugs into your computer. They did download shit onto your thing to uh, yeah. upgrade your, uh, yeah. whatever, your, your system. It's yeah, you can annoying. actually get more power out of your vehicle. They, they just program it different. It gives you more horsepower. But what is gone is any romance about any of it. Like, yeah, no yeah. one cares. Now it's just buy a car, drive it. Yeah, the romance is gone. That whole thing, the love affair of the yeah. person in their car, it's uh, that thing's gone. It's because you became attached to it because you knew you were going to have it until you were fucking 37. Yeah. Now nobody gives a shit because <laughs> they're, they're in all or... in halfway decent shape and yeah. leasing is a little better. Well, like Ant brought up the rusting. These fucking things are plastic now. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah, no, no, they just fucking take out the whole quarter panel to put something else in there. It's changed. Yeah, yeah. And you got to go with that true coat. Yeah. You get that true coat put in there. You're not fucking patching it up yourself to try to make it last through a fucking winter. <laughs> with some of that fucking, yeah. What do you used to put in there? Bondo? Yeah, it was like Bondo. It was like some kind of thing. And then you'd try to spray paint it and never be able to match. <laughs> well, you're good. Everyone was a half-assed mechanic, though. Yeah. Like you were always, yeah, yeah, my, my tool set was like a butter knife. Yeah. And fucking a nutcracker for pliers. <laughs> you go. In, I'd go in the drawers where the fuck. And uh, utensils were. It's like, yeah, I need a nutcracker for some fucking pliers. Don't break that. Bring it back. Every knife we had had a quarter turn twist right. on the end of it. <laughs> Mom would get all pissed <laughs> at. <laughs> but yeah, that was you know there was there was something kind of there's something kind of nostalgic about that that just doesn't happen anymore. And it's probably good because now if my car broke down as much as my old one did, I'd fucking I'd you kill I'd, yourself. It now. was so awful when your car broke down. Like uh, and no cell phones to call your buddy, no. Just have to walk. 
walk somewhere. A lot to- of those fucking cars too. They would break down, and you just get out, take your fucking license take off the, the back, plate. and leave. Take the just plates fuck off. Fuck this thing. Well, you don't see the cars just parked and left on the side of the expressway and parkways Never. anymore. I, I, g- growing up, when I used to go into the city with my parents and shit, you'd look, and the second you cross that Nassau Queens border, it was just. Abandoned cars like fucking uh, Road Warrior. It really was fucking. New York looks so fucking scary then. Yeah, it was petrifying for a kid uh, uh, when we used to go on field trips. We go like the Museum of Natural History, and and uh, they load the school bus up in wonderful Suffolk County, which at the time was whiter than white, and uh, take us into the city. And the second we would get through the uh, the Queens, you know, over into Queens, you'd see, start seeing abandoned cars. But then you'd pull into the Midtown Tunnel. And the second the car, the bus came out of the Midtown Tunnel, it was just this. It, it was like you know Alice in Wonderland. You were petrified, yeah. and I was petrified of getting lost and left behind, or shit like that. Would you panic when you I came would, in the city? I would panic in the city. I, I'd have to keep an eye on any of the uh, field trip moms that were there and the teacher. And if I got, one got out of sight of me, I, I'd run and have to run up. And yeah, I was such a fucking pussy. Well, cities were fucking crazy in those days. And back though. then, they were crazy. Every fucking city yeah. was scary. And, you know, they give Giuliani all the credit for bringing back New York, right? But then how did, like, you know, Philly and fucking Baltimore and all these other cities come back? Because every city, Chicago, doesn't matter where you went. Oh, there's big buildings, so there's massive amounts of crime. <laughs> yeah. Just massive amounts of crime. Yeah. And and as, uh, when, when you would be brought in as a kid, uh, how they would try to shield you from the sexual content that was just emblazoned Everywhere. on every window, billboards, and they couldn't protect you. They didn't even try to back then. Yeah. It was just part of what the deal was. This is the city. There's a fucking picture in a window, a neon sign, a woman spread eagle. And 200 plastic dicks. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. you still haven't worked everything out. So you're like, well, where does the plastic dick go? You know, you hadn't, you didn't know you everything. You not as a kid yet. Yeah. 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 You don't know what the fuck that is. Even the squeegee, plastic. even squeegee people. It's like, I forgot that they, they existed. They were fucking scary Horrendous. shit for little kids. They were, they were scary. There's a guy fucking leaning on over the car while your dad's saying yeah. no. And your dad's and yelling he, at him, yeah. yeah. When people don't listen to your dad when you're a little kid, you're like, oh, shit. How are you not listening to my dad? Everything yeah. is broken down. Yeah. Yeah. Any fucking thing it's that we thought is life is fucking, fucking crazy. Gone. You're right. You're... They don't listen to dads here. How do they not listen to dad? <laughs> like, dad could yell at anybody right. at home. Well, my friends, they'd all listen. Yeah, shut up. Hey, hey, get out of there. All right. And they would leave. This would, guy wouldn't fucking leave the windshield. I always thought it must be awful for a kid to see his father get knocked out. How oh, awful that must be to yeah. see your dad get knocked out in public. Oh, like, especially if he's a tough guy at home. See somebody fucking just oh. put him on the floor. What was the worst thing? Did you ever see your dad in a position where you're like, oh, boy, that's not Like good. see him at work or something uh, or someone's just running him down? Just someone. Yeah, I oh. saw two things that were pretty like, oh, God, that was terrible. What? I went into uh, work with uh, my dad once. He worked at uh, Joachim Flanzig and Weissman over in Mineola. <laughs> <laughs> the law firm of Joachim <laughs> Flanzig and Weissman. And... Uh, and I, he he was an investigator for them, an insurance investigator. And he'd come home, and it was cool as fuck. He'd, he'd take his jacket off, and he'd have a, a gun on his hip. And I'm just like, ah, that's, that's fucking cool. That's dad, and he's a private eye, and it's cool. It's like Mannix, you know? <laughs> and uh, he goes in, and it, he took me in with him one day. It's like, yeah, come take a ride with me. He didn't, didn't have a busy day or anything. Most of the day was spent in a bar, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, so he takes me in, and I guess Joachim had had a problem with uh, Joey that day, <laughs> uh, the day before. I guess I guess my dad might have left a job early uh, with uh, Jimmy, his buddy, to, to, to hit up a bar or something. And uh, and they made me sit out in, in the waiting room in front of Joachim's office, but I could hear everything in there. And all I heard was Joachim going... God damn fucking Joey, you got to show some fucking responsibility. I'll throw your ass out of it. And I, I'm just sitting there like, oh, dad's oh, being yelled geez. at. Dad, my dad's being yelled at like he yells at me. Was he yelling back the way he yells at you? No, no. He just... I didn't hear a peep out of him. Not a peep. And then when he, <laughs> he knew he was in the wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then when he opened the door, he was like smiling like, all right, come on, let's go. Like trying to make it all better. And, and I was just looking like, oh, you got bitched out. Uh, fucking bad. Coupled. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second time was even worse. He had an old Le Mans, a red Le Mans, which nice. is pretty nice. Yeah, it's great. Co- yeah, I think he wanted to be Mannix. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, had, he had this old Le Mans, and uh, uh, it, it had caught fire. 
So he lifted the hood up and tried to put the fire out and wound up burning his hands. So this is when my mother and him were already st- separated. So, But he, dr- he like, put the fire out and was able to drive the car actually back over to the house. But his hands were all burnt. So he was soaking them in the, uh, in the sink. And mom was there like helping him because he was like really a mess. And I went, Daddy, are you okay? And he turned around. And he had tears running down his face. He goes, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but I knew he was crying. I'm like, oh, bro, oh, shit. Uh, I should have told him what he told me all the time. <laughs> Stop with the pissy eyes. Just knock it off or I'll really give you something to cry about. He had great things for when I was crying. <laughs> it just, uh, the way they fucking turn tears from masculinity, though. Oh, like, boy. My fucking, uh. my dad and my big brother hated any kind of sensitivity. Yeah, yeah. Anything. <laughs> any kind of sensitivity at all. They, they fucking despised it. Oh, yeah. Were they huggers? Anything. No. But no, the whole no. thing of like... What are you listening to fucking music, you little girl? Like anything at all oh, that yeah, came yeah, up. Yeah. What are you reading a book? What are you doing there? What what, is you that? want to dress with that? You're like a girl. <laughs> yeah, what like... would you do that your brother thought was feminine? Anything. Just fucking using a fork. Anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> anything at all. That's like the, like the father in uh, Saturday Night Fever when Tony Manero's picking up the plates from the table. Because what are you doing? <laughs> I'm helping out. I'm bringing the plates into the. Because that's a girl's job. Put that down. Sit down. We'll talk. One pork chop. One yeah, pork yeah. chop is one pork like... chop. Yeah. Uh, five dollars. You know, five dollars <laughs> buys you. Doesn't even buy you one dollar. That was actually <laughs> the perfect, I think, seventies New York movie oh, because yeah, it was like done in real time. Like yeah. Saturday Night Fever is the only fucking nostalgic movie, but was done while people were looking at. It wasn't like a look back right, at what New York yeah, was. Yeah. It was like the exact moment. At it's really hard moment, to pull off. The disco thing, the yeah. fucking uh, the, the way the city looked, the Brooklyn, Manhattan thing. Yeah, that was. The subway. Remember just how oh, disgusting yeah. and ugly the subway was? <laughs> yeah. And how Brooklyn just looked at Manhattan as if it was somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, like this it was magical Oz. place. <laughs> you couldn't get there for some reason. I don't know why they had to go to that <laughs> shitty Brooklyn disco. <laughs> Why didn't they go to Manhattan? For 50 cents. You get on a train. Uh, yeah. You can go anywhere you want. You're there. What the fuck? They'd stand there on that dumb bridge looking at <laughs> <laughs> Staring over. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, well, we never took that break, did no, we? we yeah, Who gives a shit, right? Fuck right. breaks. Yeah. Well, uh, let, load them up during the shit show. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> After show. We load them up. All right, we'll, take, we'll take a little break, and uh, we'll be right back. 